Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. First day on the job. This is what it looks like when you're getting ready to remove planter beds on each side of a walkway. So we have some sprinklers along these planters on each side of the walkway and we're in an HOA, Homeowners Association, and uh, they don't want to do the maintenance on this area. So instead we're going to put concrete in here, wall to wall. We'll leave the sidewalk there, we'll dowel into it, and we'll float it up with concrete and we'll cap this entire sprinkler line off from its source rather than capping each individual sprinkler head off and leaving a live water line under there. We'll find its source and cap it at that point. So we start with removing the bushes. Now it's a good idea sometimes to separate your green from your dirt because you can get a lot uh, better rates at the dump for green waste versus uh, dirt. But in this case it was a one loader special. You know in other words I can fit it all in one load so I wasn't going to run two loads to two separate dumps when I could fit it all in one, one trailer, one load. So that's what we did. We one loaded it out. We're going to go a good four inches, four and a half inches down on both sides. And that little, you can see the mow strip that separates the yard there from this planter space. We're going to have to do some modifications on that as well. Now we have the generator out here because the power is on either, ha either house. And I brought this out just so we could uh, do the job without having to uh, disturb anybody and utilize their power or things of that nature. Although I did use the water from one house. Now as we dug this out we found that the footing from the block wall in some areas were actually higher than the top of the new concrete so we had to do some jackhammering as well and knock that footing down. Here is the footing right here that we started jackhammering at. I'm just going to try to knock the top of it off um, a couple inches down so we can get some concrete over it. Once I get it at least two inches below top of concrete, I'll uh, the day of the pour, I'll pour some concrete glue on there and then uh, pour the slab right over the top of it. Here's that curb right here that we had to do a modification on. The form didn't go down quite far enough when they set it up. So you can see that mushroom on the bottom. So I'll take my 14 inch diamond blade cutoff saw and cut it nice and straight down the face and then we'll have a good edge to pour against. Now we're running 3 8 inch holes, 3 8 inch dowels. So we get a nice tight fit. And this way um, these side pieces will never shift or go up or down so you'll, you'll never get a trip hazard when you dowel them together. At least that's the theory behind it. In an area this narrow and small, you really don't need a whole lot of steel. The only steel we're really putting in here um, is going to be the, your, the dowels. And then uh, we'll add some fiber mesh when the truck, truck gets here. As I happen to have my own fiber mesh that I add to the truck on arrival. Which is a lot less money going that route. And I happen to have it for sale on my storefront at davidodellconcrete.com. There's the glue that I poured on top of that foundation. I poured it on a little early that way give it time to dry and soak in. Concrete bonding, acrylic fortifier. So it's also an admix too.
the pumper has arrived. We could have potentially wheelbarrowed this, but since it's a narrow area, and if you try to dump your wheelbarrows, you're going to end up making a mess on the wall, especially without plastic. So I elected to use the pump to keep the area clean. We have a lot of slope on this sidewalk. Not really cross slope, but it's running downhill at about probably two and a half percent grade, two percent, somewhere in that vicinity. The nice thing about this edge are at 10 inches and when I edge both sides, it almost finishes the entire area. Now it's school time and this is a major thoroughfare um, shortcut to the school. So there will be some traffic walking through here from time to time, pedestrian. Yeah, as you run the edger on both sides, you just have that narrow spot in the middle where you can run one pass with the funny trowel, knock out your edger lines, and you have a finished product. By the way, those custom hats you see me wearing there, I happen to have those on my storefront as well. We're using a half inch edger, we're using three quarter inch deep half inch radius joiners and we're lining them up with the existing joints on the sidewalk that's already there which makes it real easy because you don't have to do any calculations of the distance of uh, your joints you just follow the existing. This is the next day and this is how it's curing out. We also put a curing compound on here, an acrylic concrete curing compound. It's curing out really uniform. And this is just the more, the next day about, so we poured at 7 a.m. This is 10 a.m. the next day. You can see the sprinklers from those planters, how much damage it was doing on the block wall. So it's a good thing they removed that before uh, started the wall the wall will start disintegrating the more the more the longer the water keeps pounding against it anyway thank you for watching and have a good day